Hey all of you out there in Cyberland, uh, this is Jim from Small Time Outlaws bringing you the 11th video in this series on beginning programming in Monkey. Uh, in this video we are going to be learning how to create objects or classes as you might have heard of them referred to uh, in Monkey because as it turns out Monkey is an object oriented programming language. So, and now if you're wondering what an object is, I'm going to open up Monk and show you. We're starting with a fresh main function. Actually starting above the fresh main function, I'm going to introduce you to the class keyword, which is the keyword you use to create an object. And now you'll give it your object a name. In this case, I'm going to, so you can kind of see what objects are all about. I'm going to call this student. You'll see why in just a second. I'm going to close it up. Now, the way you can think of objects is like the the monkey documentation refers to them as a blueprint, and that's a pretty good description. I kind of I kind of think of them as like a prototype for something for a a concept. You you can think of like a prototype car. It's just plain, you know, it's it's just the introductory model and it's, you add options to it, make changes here or there, you give different options for different people. So you can think of this student as the prototypical person that goes to school, if that makes sense. So, so you can say this student has certain properties that set him apart from other students. One, so one property obviously you could say is name and in monkey these properties are called fields and we'll use the field keyword and it's just a variable that's associated with this object and we'll call this variable name and its type is string so we're going to be storing a string in there and now something else that might set the student apart from other students is the student's age and we'll make this age and int and finally let's do you can say their their grade point average and we'll just so we can get all the different types of energy all the different types of variables we'll do a float for that okay so these are three basic things that set students apart so each instance of this object you, cre you create it's going to have different values stored in the, into these variables. They don't have to have different values. Each object has its own set of these variables. So then you can store whatever you want in them. And now what we'll create after we've created our set up our fields, we'll create the constructor. And the way you do that is use the method keyword. And this is how you create a method for an object that you can call. In this case, with the constructor, this is the method that gets called when you create the object when, or when you create the instance of this object and in this case we're gonna pass in a couple variables at creation time just you know so you can s initialize this object with with certain values and in this case we're gonna send in name and names gonna be a string and we're gonna send in the age and that's an int and we'll close this method and now that we've done this, now we can perform any kind of initialization code you want whenever you create an instance of this object. So in this case, I'm going to I want to initialize name with the name that comes in and age with the age that comes in. And now because the name of this variable is the same as this field, you have to kind of set it apart from the name the variable coming in. And how you do that is you use the self keyword and basically this just refers to itself so you can access the fields and methods of this object from within this object so we're going to say self.name and this points to this name variable and we're going to assign it the name variable that's coming in so notice when you use this self.name that means this name is different if, yeah. and then we'll do the same thing with the age coming in now you don't have to do this. I sometimes so I usually don't use self at all, which is you know some might say that's bad coding practices, but I say I do what I want. So what I'll usually do is just put an underscore 
or something in front and that sets it apart and then I can just do name is assigned underscore name but for educational purposes I want to show you that how to use self because sometimes it does come in handy or quite often it really does but yeah and now below that I'm gonna set up a couple of other methods and what these methods are gonna do they're gonna set allow you to set the GPA and get the student's GPA. Now this returns a float. Don't forget it's the same as functions. And we'll set. And so what, what's going to happen here? You're going to do self.gpa is assign the GPA coming in. And this one you're going to return. And now, since you don't have a variable called GPA coming in here, you don't have any variables at all, you can just return GPA. Or you can do return self.gpa. It's however you want to do it. I like to do just GPA. Okay, now that we're able to initialize all of our variables, we're going to go ahead and create this, create an instance of this object. So down in our main function, we're going to create a local variable. We'll call it student1, and its variable type is going to be that object name, which is student. And we're going to assign it, and then how you create or initialize these objects is using the new keyword. You notice that's the instructor is called new, so that's how you know that's, an, that's a constructor. And say new student, that's the object name, not the variable name, but the object name. And then we're going to pass in the name and the age. So we're going to call him Billy, and we'll say he is 16. And now that you've created and initialized this object, you can start accessing its uh, methods and fields. So we'll say student one dot set GPA and we'll send in a GPA. He's not a very good student. And we can access the fields, all the fields right now. I'm going to show you how to make it so you can kind of lock that stuff down. For right now, everything's wide open. And so we're going to output, we'll say this student's. GPA is student one dot get GPA. Uh, so now you might be asking yourself, well, why did you access the field here and then use a method here to get a field when you could have just accessed the field straight away? You could have just accessed student one dot GPA. Well, I don't really have a very good answer for that question yet. I'm going to go over that later on, but basically how usually how people set up their code, their objects, is most of their fields are going to be what's called, called private. And then they're going to use these setter and getter methods to get those values. That way, when you call set, you can do other things other than just set the GPA. You can recalculate something. And I'm going to show you properties in the next video that shows you how that all works. So, but for right now, you probably won't ever use these set and get GPA methods. You probably use properties. But for right now, I just kind of want to show you how these methods work. And so this is just an example. And now I'm going to build this and run it. You can see that Billy's GPA is 2.5. Good job, Billy. Oh, wait, you can't see that. <laughs> now you can see it. And then get me off Twitter. All right. And that wraps up part one of this intro to objects. Join me in the next one. We're going to finish this up. I'm going to show you all about properties and then static functions that I mentioned before. So I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget, email me, jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com, or leave some comments down below. Thanks for watching.